Hi everybody and welcome to City Beat. I am your host Nancy Byrne and we are standing in front of the brand new Las Vegas Fire and Rescue Station 3. It actually replaces one of the oldest fire stations in our city. Well this is not the only thing new at Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. We have some leadership changes and for the first time in history we have two women serving as deputy chiefs. Sue Levitt shows us they are eager to get started in their new positions. Dina D'Alessio and Sarah McRae have served our city with Las Vegas Fire and Rescue for over two decades. Both have extremely impressive careers, serving in many different capacities, working their way up through the ranks, and now being the first women ever to be promoted to Deputy Fire Chief. This particular position I have dreamt about. I have put myself in that role. I've, I've thought about it, especially for the last several years. And so it's, there's nothing more um, for a goal for me that I wanted than, to, than this specific position of Deputy Chief of Operations. So I'm very excited. Very excited, obviously very honored and humbled to um, be entrusted in this new position and this new role. These two highly skilled, talented women have accomplished some pretty amazing tasks to this point in their careers. Dina currently serves as the Nevada Task Force One National FEMA team leader. Our Task Force One team from Nevada is one of 28 Federal Emergency Management Agency urban search and rescue task forces that are prepared to respond to state or federal disasters throughout the United States. Dina has coordinated the responses of five deployments, including those for Hurricanes Irma, Harvey, and Florence. I have uh, a lot of love for the team and where it's gone and what we've done uh, in the group who I work with there. So essentially it brings a, a lot of subject matter experts from around the valley, whether it be physicians, structural engineers, hazmat tech, rescue personnel, um, and we come together. Sarah has been a member of our technical rescue team. This is a highly skilled group of firefighters that respond to more specific rescues, like vehicle extrications or rescuing victims from high angles. Sarah also created our nurse call line to help reduce unnecessary 911 calls. What we know is that people use the 911 system uh, because, because it's easy, it's dependable, we always respond. And now, when someone does call into our 911 system, if their concern is determined not to be an emergency, they are then transferred to one of our registered nurses. We have an experienced bachelor's degree nurse sitting on the other end of the line, and you know our 911 call takers triage the call like they do any other call. Dina and Sarah join a team of two other deputy chiefs, Robert Nolan and David Slattery. I do think as, as a woman, we, we have um, I bring a different perspective, a different um, set of listening, uh, problem solving, um, collaborative effort. I think you know you'll see the way that that our job has changed. I mean, the technology has changed, uh, the science behind what we do has changed, and how we um, interact with our community partners. And it's more of a collaborative effort. These two veteran firefighters are excited and ready for the challenges ahead, both bringing a unique background and skill set to Las Vegas Fire and Rescue. They want me to look at all lines of our business and look for ways to be innovative and you know, reduce unnecessary work, be more efficient in the work that we do. So I look forward to that, that challenge. Um, I think innovation is a lot of fun. I love thinking outside of the box. To make the working environment uh, safer and better for our folks on the floor to be able to serve the community in a different capacity. And then the compliance side is all about our professional standards and making sure that that we are excellent in every way and that we don't take anything for, for granted and that we um, uphold our responsibility to the community with absolute commitment. For City Beat, I'm Sue Levitt. Jeff Buchanan has also joined Las Vegas Fire and Rescue as a senior deputy chief. He comes to us from Clark County Fire Department. Sue Levitt, thank you so much for that story. Well, we're going to stay on this emergency and medical theme just a little bit longer. It's hard to believe that e-cigarettes or vaping has been around for more than a decade. 
first touted as a safe way to transition from traditional cigarettes to quitting altogether, it made a big splash with adults. Well, now we're seeing a dramatic increase in teens vaping. Health officials say not only is this not a safe tool to quit smoking, it's also now linked to a very dangerous lung injury. So they have a new warning for teens and their parents. The use of e-cigarettes by high school students has increased from about 1% in 2011 to more than 27% in 2019. We believe, and this data has shown, that the vaping epidemic amongst high schoolers is truly that it is an epidemic. And according to Malcolm Allo of the Southern Nevada Health District, sneaking e-cigarettes can get by even the most attentive parents and teachers. As the numbers grow, so do the methods of hiding the e-cigarettes. Allo shows us just a few of the crafty concealing devices that have been confiscated from Clark County High Schools. Some of these things look like Sharpies, where you pull it out like this and the jewel is easily hideable. Um, more shocking watches, um, where you easily poke it out like this. You smoke the electronic vapor product in here. Highlighters, pens, brushes, gum, Kleenex, etc. There are even hoodies and backpacks equipped with e-cigarette compartments. These things may make it easy to hide the vaping tools, but what can no longer be hidden is a life-threatening injury recently linked to vaping. There was a cluster of illnesses in the Midwest in, in this country, and Basically, it was determined that they all had a similar illness, but they couldn't identify why these people were sick. What they did find is that all of these people had a commonality in that they reported vaping. Kimberly Hurtin says discovering the cause of that life-threatening lung injury in the Midwest enabled health officials across the country to sound the alarm. E-cigarettes are just as dangerous as traditional cigarettes, not just to teens, but to vapors of all ages. Once it was determined that there was a cluster of illnesses all caused by vaping, then the message went out per the CDC to all the local and state jurisdictions to look for this. And so we were able to notify our medical community to let us know if they were seeing similar things. Pertin says it's difficult to know all of the detrimental health impacts vaping can cause for two reasons. It's still so new and health officials don't even know where many of the e-cigarettes are coming from. I think what's particularly scary for us is that it is newly identified. We don't know the long-term outcomes. We know that there's deaths associated with this illness and that um, we don't have a lot of control. A lot of the people who developed this admitted to getting these products maybe on the street or through a friend um, and so that it's not really highly regulated at this point. One in five teens vape on a regular basis in Nevada. 50% admit to at least trying it. Why the number's so high? Well, Alo says it's all in the marketing. The vaping industry has done a great job. They've done multiple things to encourage youth to use these products. There's over 8,000 different types of flavors that lies in their marketing, sponsoring of community events, the use of influencers. All of these things have encouraged teens to use these products, and we haven't seen that slowing down. And it's not just the person vaping that is likely suffering. Second-hand vapor is no safer than second-hand smoke. The aerosol or vapor that's coming off of these electronic vaping products are not safe. In fact, leading health organizations, including the CDC, have deemed that these this second-hand smoke or second-hand aerosol does include cancer-causing chemicals, nickel, tin, heavy metals, etc. So it's not safe to be around those who are using these electronic vaping products. But health experts say this is not a time to give up. It's time to get informed and take action. www.gethealthyclarkcounty.org is a good place to start. We encourage all parents to visit our website to find help in identifying how these products look like and how teens are hiding these products so that they can have real conversations with their teens about the dangers of using electronic vaping products. Getting those products out of the hands of teens is a strong first step to ending this vaping epidemic. Malcolm Allo also tells us that in the last legislative session, the Nevada Clean Air Act expanded to include e-cigarettes, meaning if you can't smoke cigarettes in one area, you can no longer vape there as well. You know, while we were at the health district, we decided to do a little bit of research to separate fact from myth concerning the coronavirus. And while health experts say we should not live in fear, there are some sensible and easy steps you can take to protect yourself. 
First and foremost, wash your hands often, especially when returning to your home or office from being out and about. Wash for 20 seconds with hot water and soap. If that's not available, use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Next, if you're sick, you'll be more of a hero at work or school if you don't try to make it in. Stay home and get well. Don't spread the germs. Cover your coughs and sneezes with a tissue, throw it away, and wash your hands. If you don't have a tissue, cough or sneeze into your elbow. Keep your home clean and disinfect it. Keep Clorox wipes or any type of disinfectant handy in several places in your home so you can periodically wipe everything down from countertops to kids' toys to bathroom surfaces. Finally, a lot of people are getting a false sense of security from the surgical masks. They don't really protect you from the virus since they are not airtight to your face. The CDC is not recommending the use of masks at this time. We are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, it's all aboard pre-K learning on a very special bus. Congratulations to the City of Las Vegas Employee of the Month, Jessica Gore. Jessica is a custodian and has been with the city since 2014. One of Jessica's assignments is to take care of KCLV TV Channel 2, our TV station here at City Hall. Her attention to detail ensures that our sensitive video and electronic equipment areas are dust and dirt free, preserving our expensive equipment and our beautiful facilities. Jessica creates a clean, positive atmosphere for our staff and a wonderful first impression to the many guests that come through the TV station. Although she works the overnight shift and is rarely seen by the staff, her personal touches and hard work do not go unnoticed. Congratulations to Jessica Gore, the City of Las Vegas Employee of the Month. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. Finding parking in downtown Las Vegas is easy thanks to the new ParkMe app. The free app makes it possible for you to find parking before you even leave your home. Just download the app directly to your iPhone or Android and let ParkMe help park you. You'll find the best spot for the best price and never waste time driving around looking for a parking spot again. So next time you're heading to the downtown area, let ParkMe do the work and see how easy parking can be. You can even pay using your mobile device. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Welcome back to City Beat from Las Vegas Fire and Rescue's brand new Station 3. Imagine showing up to your first day of work and not really understanding your job description, not being up to speed on topics everyone else seems to be informed on, and not really understanding the basics of your job. Well, that's how too many children feel on their first day of kindergarten. That's why the City of Las Vegas has joined forces with a lot of wonderful community partners to start Strong Start Schools. And now, if the kids can't get to the schools, well, the classroom comes to them. Front cover, back cover, spine and title. These are the parts of the books we read. It's reading time in this pre-K class, and every child is involved in the song, then the story. Who's sitting on top of the rock? The lion. The lion. Gianni, do you see the lion? Right here. Yeah. Yes. 
Like all pre-kindergarten classrooms, participation is all part of the fun of learning. But something that sets this classroom apart from others is this one is on wheels. It's the Strong Start Go mobile pre-K bus, and it travels to neighborhoods where children have a few affordable options when it comes to preparing to start their education. The city um, decided to put money into a bus, a mobile pre-K, and we can actually take the bus into areas that are underserved. What goes on in this bus is exactly what you would find in a brick and mortar preschool, from the reading circle to a touch screen that aids in important lessons. There is time for play and exercise, but the emphasis is on education and preparing these children for kindergarten. But when they are on the bus, we have a number of activities um, that span the curriculum or of development. So we have, they, the kids do activities with science, they do uh, math activities, um, plenty of uh, literacy activities. Along with education, socialization is also a focus. For example, each student chooses how they wish to be greeted when they arrive at the classroom. Do you choose, do you, want to, do you just want us to wave to you? Do you just want a fist bump? Do you want a high five? Do you want a hug? Or do you want a handshake? And each one, each one of them, as they come on, they choose which one they want to do. Even the exterior of the bus was carefully planned and thought out by the Youth Development and Social Innovation, or YDSI, staff. They wanted it bright and inviting. We thought about the colors, the blue and the yellow and the city, uh, city blue, basically, um, and making sure that the colors complement. But then we also have the pictures of children on the outside. But what most people don't know is the pictures on the outside are actually children from our community. This classroom on wheels is putting children who might not have been given the chance for pre-K on the road to success so that no child starts their kindergarten year feeling like they are already behind. We know by the research that 90% um, of the brain develops before kindergarten. So it's very important that par parents uh, and families actually start uh, working with their children, providing plenty of activities for them to develop their brains uh, as much as possible before kindergarten so that children, when they do actually start kindergarten, they are ready for kindergarten. This is a matter of us sort of making things right for some underserved children who do come onto the bus. We're able to put them in a position and their families into a position where they're actually starting out kindergarten, starting out the K-12 curriculum or K-12 continuum on pace. Or a little more, more grr and a little less meek. Well, he Congratulations to the Strong Start Go Mobile Pre-K Academy. It has just been honored with the prestigious Cashman Good Government Award sponsored by the Nevada Taxpayer Association. For more information on the bus and its locations, you can go to 229kids or you can go to our website, lasvegasnevada.gov, click on departments and look for youth development and social innovation. Well, the city of Las Vegas is not only good at teaching our little ones, we're also good at teaching our active adults. Right now, Sue Levitt takes us inside a yoga studio for this edition of Discover the Fun. Hi everyone, I'm Sue Levitt, bringing you Discover the Fun from our Doolittle Senior Center. Now, if you are a senior looking to get active, this is the place to be. There are so many different classes and activities. There's something for everyone here. And today, we wanna to show you how some of the seniors here are staying balanced and focused. And let's take our arms up overhead. Look up, inhale, stretch. Exhale, hands to the heart. Yoga instructor Linda Bound begins her class today with some controlled deep breathing. Inhale through the nose and let it go. Linda has been teaching yoga for years, but just started here at Doolittle a few months ago. I find a real love for it. It's changed my life. Um, I love to serve the community, the yoga community, and that's why I come here. These people are great. Yoga is known to provide many health benefits to those who choose to practice, but especially seniors. As our bodies age, we tend to lose some of our flexibility and balance. Our teacher, uh, Linda does a lot of different things. She doesn't just do the same thing every day. Uh, we're able to do different, we do the yoga poses, but we get a lot of stretching 
in and I feel I need the stretching as I get older. Many of the yoga poses Linda chooses for the seniors work on increasing core strength and balance which can help reduce the risk of fall related injuries. Linda can get you to do a pose that you think you can't do because she just slowly and gradually take you through it and when you look up you in that pose. Put the right palm to the sky and reverse it. Peaceful warrior. Walking better, sleeping better, feeling less stress in their lives. All of the class members tell us of different health benefits they've experienced since starting their yoga practice with Linda. Yoga is a different kind of discipline. Um, I think mostly it builds bone density, flexibility, strength, stamina. Um, we use our own bodies, you know, to, to create that muscle mass. And so, I th and plus it's a practice. It's not just exercise. It's, it's a practice that you do the rest of your life. It can also be very spiritual and it connects the breath, the mind, the body. It all goes together. So if you're thinking about trying one of our yoga classes, just know that you don't have to be flexible and strong to start. You come to yoga to gain that strength, to become more flexible, to find something Something bigger inside of you and it really creates a curiosity about what you can do not just with your body but with your spirit and your intention so it's kind of a whole package one thing that you will discover is you can't believe how great you really are once you start doing yoga anyone is welcome to join the class for more information on that class or any of the activities or classes at any of our centers just go to 229 play. Thank you, Sue Levitt, for that story. Time for another break, and when we come back, we're going to show you some amazing art found in an alley in downtown Las Vegas. They say you don't have to be so strong, but this is my mother, my purpose. Strength is not optional. See, I lift her now like she raised me then, so I know my strength is super, but I'm still human. Oh, look who's here. Drop that baby. <laughs> Welcome back to City Beat from Las Vegas Fire and Rescue's brand new Station 3. We'd like to take a little time to tell you about some projects that are taking place in some of our tired and rundown areas of downtown, giving people new places to play, eat and drink, starting with an alley in downtown Las Vegas. It's hard to believe this alley in downtown Las Vegas not too long ago was a rundown, rather dirty place where you would never dream of gathering with friends to enjoy art, take in some music, and grab a drink. But thanks to the Nevada Nonprofit Corporation, Downtown Alley Community Coalition, and the City of Las Vegas, welcome to DT Alley. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Downtown Alley Community Coalition! The notoriously outspoken gazillionaire from Spiegel World's cabaret show, Absinthe, opened the alley in true form. And to say he had some of the greatest city and community leaders to introduce would be an understatement, starting with Mayor Carolyn Goodman. This really is a phenomenally exciting and innovative project. And that's the only thing that Todd knows how to do. He is so inspirational. He's been in town a long time. But to take a disgusting alley that was really crummy, and make it into something that's going to continue to grow and be spectacular. It's literally going to be a party from alleyway to alleyway with music, with art, with food, with bars. You know, little bars like, what do you call them, like peekaboo bars? They just pop out of the wall and then there you have a beer. Councilwoman Olivia Diaz represents this area of the city and she was bowled over by the attention to detail the coalition and their leader, Todd Kessler, put into the artwork here. What he did is he went and he found people who had a profound commitment to Las Vegas and he brought them on board as part of the vision and part of the, the project. And so, for example, we'll have the young children from the Ninth Bridge School coming to the downtown alley uh, for curricular activities. We have folks from Caridad, the organization who will help maintain and keep up the gardens. Todd Kessler continued his attention to art by presenting all the leaders present 
with a present. Caricatures depicting each leader as a superhero. Then with a countdown. Three, two, one. This former tired alley came back to life. Gazillionaire on behalf of Spiegel World's Absinthe looked around in his limo for some spare change and came up with $5,000 and donated it to the Alley Project. Now on to another area of our downtown, Maryland Parkway in Charleston. The Huntred Shopping Center just got a brand new facelift and we were there for the grand opening on February 20th. The rock and roll mariachi set the festive tone for the reopening of this historic Huntred Shopping Center. The beautiful 4,000 square foot swoop top building is enough to grab your attention, but if you love good casual food, there are even more reasons to turn into this remodeled center. Roberto's Tacos has been a favorite for decades here in Las Vegas, and now there is this new location for you to get your taco fix. <laughs> And who doesn't love a Capriati's Bobby sandwich? Sure, it's turkey, cranberry, and bread stuffing on bread. But since it's always a top request, free samples were handed out at the grand reopening celebration. This project, like many in the Huntridge area of the city, are being given new life by dapper companies. I just wanted to say thank you for coming and caring about what we're doing down here in downtown Las Vegas. A lot of dignitaries were on hand to celebrate this older area of our city being given new life, including Councilwoman Olivia Diaz, who represents this historic part of Las Vegas. So I want to thank you all for joining us tonight for the official opening of two amazing businesses here in Ward 3. We're, as many of you know, we've been getting a lot of use out of our scissors for ribbon cutting here in Ward 3 because we have a lot of excitement and a lot of small businesses getting ready to offer their services to you. Also part of the celebration on this evening, the remodeling of the Circle K and Garrison Barbershop. With this and the renovations of the old Huntridge Theater, this area of Charleston and Maryland Parkway is shaping up to be yet another must-see stop in downtown Las Vegas. Stop by and check it out for yourself. The new and improved Huntridge Shopping Center is located at 1120 East Charleston. Well, if you noticed a bunch of young, agile soccer players descending on our city parks, that's just because we once again hosted the Mayor Cup Soccer Tournament. As we say goodbye, we'll show you just some of the action.